Hey, welcome to Garden Fork Radio. Thanks for downloading the show. My name is Eric. I'm your host. I have this podcast and a YouTube channel. It's all about eclectic DIY. It's fixing stuff or building stuff or cooking stuff. And me and my friends talk about what we think are interesting, and I hope that you will find it interesting as well. Today, I'm here with the executive producer and longtime friend of Garden Fork Radio, Jimmy. Welcome, Jimmy. Hey, welcome. I love that intro music. I tell you what, every time I hear that, I can't wait to see what's in store. And this time, it's me. Yay. <laughs> How you doing, Eric? I'm great. It's uh, I'm, I got a big smile on my face because we don't talk often enough. We text a lot um, with your great knowledge and influence on the podcast, um, but we don't talk I'd... as much as we should. No, and it's still funny because when I hear your voice, I get I still get starstruck. <laughs> well, I'm <laughs> starstruck today because you sent me a text of you standing next to what looked like an aluminum UFO. And I'm like, what's that? And you said, it's my new jet boat. And then you sent me a link to a YouTube channel and I went down a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you might have to brush up on your welding skills if you want to put one. You, you can buy a kit and put it together, but it, it all just got more overwhelming. I mean, I want one of these things for like four, five years. I just saw a video one time, this uh, guy named Thomas Hewitt, and he's in um new zealand and i think that's where they kind of started uh yeah and if you just google or go on youtube and put in uh jet boat new zealand or mini jet boat you'll see them and they do look like ufos it's funny or you know some people say it looks like uh looks like james bond's boat yes yes so let's just dial back for a minute and what is a jet boat? Well, uh, I'm sure everyone knows what a jet ski is. Mm -hmm. And this is um, a tiny little two-seat, even though I've seen them now, they're making them four-seat. And they, they, they even make them that are 50 feet long where they take people up giant rivers on excursions and whatnot. But uh, this thing is 11 feet long. It has two seats and... It has the engine out of a jet ski sitting right behind you. Instead of riding over top of it, it's in the back. And so it sucks water up from underneath of the boat and shoots it out the back. That's what propels you. And you can buy this kit and weld all these flat pieces together, bend it, weld it, and then you put a jet ski engine in it. There's a whole lot of complicated stuff involved with it, but that's essentially it. It's... It weighs less than a jet ski. It's it looks much bigger, but it weighs less because it's not all fiberglass. Well, but, the video um, you sent me, I was like, "Holy cow!" It was two guys in a jet ski with what looked like a GoPro, and the one guy is driving and steering; the other guy is holding on with a rope. <laughs> yes, and they're I didn't like the rope idea, <laughs> and they're skimming over the water and able to fly across really shallow. Shallow, they looked like they were in a river, really shallow parts of a river, to the point that the bottom was scraping. Yeah, so the bottom is covered. I mean, this is something that you can add. If you're just going to get one and put it in a lake, I mean, you're, you're kind of an idiot because if there's a, one other boat on the lake, this thing is going to just beat you to death because <laughs> it's not really meant to take uh, any kind of wave. sideward wave action and stuff. I mean, yep. if you want to go hit some stuff, you can jump over a big wake. Absolutely. But uh, it's not meant to be out there with a bunch of other boats. It's it's semi flat bottom with like a V hull front. So it goes from a V to a flat bottom. And uh, it's got a little swim deck on the back where you can climb in and out. And it's real basic. Essentially what you do is you take a jet ski and you just tear everything out of it. The engine the uh, all of the electronics, um, the steering cables, the gas tank, the uh, the muffler, which actually water runs through. Just take everything out of the jet ski. I paid my my jet ski mechanic guy a hundred dollars, and he just tore everything out of it, and put it all in my um, back of my wife's little Subaru, and then I drove it up to this guy in Ohio, uh, David at uh, River Rat Jet Boats. And um, 
he helped me put the whole thing together. So it, it was kind of a one-stop deal. Uh, I, I knew that me and my dad could weld the thing together, but then I'm, I'm not going to be able to tear the jet ski apart. Well, I can tear, I can tear anything apart. Right. I wasn't going to be able to Intact. put it in here. Yeah, there's, in, there's like the intake part where it sucks up out uh, and goes into the engine. You can't take that out of the jet ski. Um, you have to, that has like, it's specialized. So depending on what motor you have, if it's a two stroke or a four stroke, or they even have four stroke supercharged Rotaxes out of some of these big, you know, Polaris ones are 300 and 320 horsepower, just oh, wow. insane. Um, people put like 20 or 40 gallon gas tanks in them so that they can go long ways. But the way I went with mine, it's it's from a 1998 Kawasaki 1100 um, STX, which is was like the Cadillac of um, jet skis in 1998. They made a smaller version with the same engine, which was faster. But this is the big one that you can put three people on. But I, I just pretty much bought it for the engine and <laughs> had – that was it. I got it for like $800 with a trailer that would hold two jet skis. Oh, wow. So, so I paid this guy, uh, my boat mechanic, you know, hundreds of dollars to rebuild the engine and just kind of refresh it because, you know, it was 21 years old. Mm-hmm. And then he kept the shell and he's using – parts of that and he says he might turn it back into one because he's got all these other parts but um it was a fun process um i bought that jet ski in the summer of 2019 and rode the jet ski around you know that summer and made sure that the engine was all going right and and got everything ironed out and i learned a lot about two-stroke motors because the the kawasaki you had is a two-stroke it is. So for everyone to, listening, a two-stroke engine will burn a gas-oil mixture, and four-stroke burns just gas. Four-stroke engines are like your uh, car is a four-stroke engine, and two-stroke is like a chainsaw engine. A weed, or a eater, jet ski. weed eater, weed motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, so older, you know, uh, dirt motorcycles. Everything is really lately going to four-strokes because – uh, number one, they they're cleaner, and but they tend to be a little, have to be a little bigger, yep. and a little heavier, um, and they're more expensive. But this this motor was when I was researching. I talked to all these different people that make the boats, like people at Mini Jet and people at Jetstream Adventure Boats, um, the big people who really do them all up in Canada and. So what kind of jet ski should I be looking for? And they said either um, a Rotax or one of these Kawasaki's. So the Rotax, when they when they break, they break bad, and and they're expensive and they're finicky. But he said this one here, this 1100 Kawasaki, is just it's small, it's light, it's simple, and they'll run forever. And I like the sound of all that, and they were cheap. Yeah. Uh, so. These people who are building these ones with superchargers and, and all these gizmos and gadgets and, and huge gas tanks, if they get stuck, they're not going to be able to get behind it and slide this thing off of the rock they're stuck on. Right. So I just figured go small, light, nimble, you know, like Bruce Lee. Do you shop on Amazon? I shop locally and also on Amazon and other online stores. If I need something very specific, like seat covers for the new used car we just bought, I will go online and sometimes use Amazon. And Garden Fork happens to have a dedicated shopping page on the Amazon site now, which is very cool. It is an affiliate linked page. We do get a finder's fee for anything that you buy when you start shopping from that page. But I list there interesting items that I think are worthy of the Garden Fork DIY person. It's amazon.com slash shop slash Garden Fork. If you would start your Amazon shopping experience, no matter what you're looking for on Amazon, start it at Garden Fork and that would be great. It's amazon.com slash shop slash Garden Fork. 
That's amazon.com slash shop slash garden fork. <laughs> so you brought all this up to uh, the gentleman up in Ohio and it took him like weeks or a couple of months to put it all together for you? Yeah, it took about, because, you know, with Christmas, uh, it took about five or six weeks. I got kind of lucky because when I was the first person after watching this video on YouTube, this guy, it, his channel's called Aqua Chigger, like the bug, C-H-I-G-G-E-R. And he, he just showed up with one one day. He's, he goes metal detecting and venturing and goes in caves. And he had a, a kayak that had a built-in motor that he would use to get all these places he wanted to go on these rivers in Maryland. And then one day he shows up with his jet boat and I was just like, Oh my God, that's one of the boats I want. And he said he bought it from this guy in Ohio. And I was excited because it was so close to North Carolina. I said, I can drive up and talk to this guy. So I was the first person to email him. And then I got him on Instagram and we were talking that night and I got first in line and it wasn't just a week later. He was booked up until March with wow. orders. But I got super lucky because he had already built this boat. And it was built for the engine that I had. Because he, he already, as a matter of fact, he had two of those engines sitting in his shop, just like mine. They're like teal blue. You can't miss it. And he had built this boat for himself. And it was for this motor. And then he just decided all of a sudden he wanted to have a four-stroke. But the boat wasn't built and designed for it. So he sold me the one that he built for himself. So I kind of thought, if you're building it for yourself, you know, you're, you're probably doing a really good job because it's for you. So I yeah. got that boat, and then he started – he's building his own. I'm watching him on Instagram as he goes through building his. But uh, what was I – I was going to say earlier, you talked about the, the, how the boat can go in shallow water. You can run it through zero water. <laughs> if there's like a huge sandbar yep. or like a tree that's halfway submerged across the water, the whole bottom of it is covered in this half-inch thick uh, UHMW plastic. And that stands for ultra-high molecular weight. It's really dense. I mean, you can take the, a super sharp hunting knife and just jab into it and like pull backwards on it and just going to leave a tiny little scratch. And it's almost semi self healing. So I've seen people that will, they jump them over, over a bank and into another body of water ah. or, or they'll run it right up onto the bank in the snow uh, and just, and go like a hundred yards and bloop, back into another bit of water. So all that really had me excited for five years. I haven't done any of that yet. I've only had it on the lake because uh, uh, all the rivers have been kind of swollen. And the places where you can go put them in are still muddy. They haven't went and got them ready for spring yet. But it I, is. It's, it might be the funnest thing I've ever owned. So you sent me a, pic a little video or a picture of you with it uh, on the lake. And there were two guys in a fishing boat, a John boat. And they... They looked a little concerned. Was there? Uh, were they actually? Were they just curious about the boat, or they really didn't want the boat near them? Um, I think it was mostly curiosity. If they where they were was right by the dock. Oh, so okay. They weren't going out, you know, a hundred yards from the dock and fishing. They were either on their way in or on their way out. But you know what? I didn't care. I just got a new toy, and <laughs> I just went. Just went to rip, and that was the day that I got it. And the guy was out there showing me how to do everything. But I mean, it, it turns a lot of heads. I've I'd never seen one in in person. And when it got back off the water, and we're pulling it out, it, a whole crowd gathered around with questions, wanting to see what it was, how much are they, where'd you get this, what is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were they were like asking questions out of order. That they all wanted to see the engine, and yeah, the, even the guy that, that runs the marina came out there, and he's like, "What is that thing?" He's like, "What what propels that thing?" And he said, "You were throwing like a thirty foot rooster tail behind you. What's going on?" Wow. So, so he's got adjustable trim. 
Oh, wow. So you can, it's just three positions backs in the center where you're going to run it most of the time. But if you, if you put the trim forward, it sort of dips the back end down yep. and it drags them and it, I mean, you could, you can go by and just sink someone in a canoe, which I plan on doing to my buddies on the river trip this year. <laughs> but I like canoes. <laughs> oh, I, I have a canoe. I need two boats. I have, I, I usually have two canoes and I've got, you know, a trolling motor set up on, on my canoe. And that's what I've done for years. I love to go up river because you can go by yourself. Yep. And then you come back down, there's your truck. Well, this thing here, you can go up river, but, uh, you can get where you're going a little bit faster. And even if you see like a little side channel coming off the river, you can just, if you scout it a little bit, you can just go through. I mean, if you're sitting still, you can probably get away with being in like six inches of water. Yeah. But if you're just ripping, you can go through three inches of water. Wow. Because it sort of lifts itself up. And mine's got this built-in thing. The grate in the bottom, I don't know, it's about the size of uh, like a tray from McDonald's that you get your food on, maybe a few inches more narrow. Mm -hmm. And it's just these metal slats where it sucks the water up in, and the slats are there to keep from sucking up rocks and sticks and yep. leaves and things. But if that gets clogged, the performance really drops off fast. So <laughs> this, has a, this has another set of grates that are located directly above those. And there's, there's this little platform in the back with, with two little pipes that's spring loaded and you step on that and it drives that top series of plates through the bottom ones. Like you put your fingers out facing each other and just sort of, you know, weave them up and down through. It just right. sort of cleans everything out. But what I've found out is if you don't turn the engine off, the suction won't let anything loose. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I learned that I got back into some leaves, uh, just place at the end of the lake and the whole bottom just got clogged and it was freezing cold and I was stuck in a sandbar. <laughs> I had to take off my boots and my socks and roll my pants all the way up. And I finally got the thing off, but it, it, it wasn't running very good. It was just very sluggish. So it was just like blah, 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 blah. So I motored that way for 20, 25 minutes, which if the boat was running, I would have been able to go that far in about, I don't know, 90 seconds. Yeah. So that fouled the plugs because I took it out again a week later after I got the big gob of goo out from underneath of it. So I was jumping on the stomp grate, but I wasn't turning the engine off. Uh -huh. So it was sort of keeping everything stuck. So I'm, I'm trying to learn all this stuff before – for spring comes, so yeah, the guy replaced the plugs, and he said, "Oh yeah, they're foul. They were just black." Because he said, "Were you idle in it for a long time?" And I said, "About a half hour." <laughs> there you he go. Said, yeah, that'll do it. So, so it's it's River Rat Jet Boats is the guy in Ohio. That's it. Yeah, David. You can if you look that up. I think I think he has a Facebook page. I don't use Facebook, but I know he has an Instagram, and you can contact him through that. Because you can buy a kit. Yeah. He actually he has a license through um, Minijet, and they they had this original design, and this new design is built different. Uh, the rear end is different. It's it sort of the back end has more flotation built into it, and the bottom of it has these things. I think they're called strafes, sort of like when you have a canoe that's got those rails on the bottom that help the boat track better. Yes. Um, it's called a skeg. All right. So this has got those built into it. So it allows you to make a little bit more precise turns and the boat just tracks better. So they, he was building these, the old style boats, but they didn't want to let him build the new ones. Well, they finally relented. Yeah. And now he has to, he pays them a certain amount of money for every one that he builds. Yeah, it's a license. So, yeah, yeah. A license, yeah. And it's all aluminum that's cut on a CNC machine, bend, folded, and they'll ship them to you on a big pallet. You can weld it all together yourself. There's lots of YouTube videos you can watch guys going from the beginning to the end 
There's one guy, I think his YouTube channel is Local Host. It's weird, but he doesn't get a lot of views, but him and his buddies showing him unpacking the crate, you know, burning the burning the crate up out in the yard and start starting to weld on the thing and you know, not the best looking welds, but uh you know, uh, welding aluminum takes an art. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. All right, so I'll link to all that because um, I see the video here of Aqua Aqua Chigger with his uh, jet boat. So I'll have to watch that. So that's it. And well, he said during that thing, which got me super excited, that if you get a hold of David at River Rat and you end up buying a boat, which I had pretty much already decided, he said he'll send you two hats. And I just got my Aqua Chigger hats yesterday. I was so excited. <laughs> I'm part of Chig's army. Yeah, you're the you're the head the head of the Garden Fork Army, but uh, you don't have a hat. I do have. Uh, I've got two hoodies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I got a G Fork sticker on the back of my truck. Yay! Yeah. Never been asked about that. I think people are a little afraid. They ask more more often. They ask about this um, this jug that I have on the back that has a huge magnet in it that I always have sitting on the side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> it'll stay on there going like 70 miles an hour people will stop at a red light and they're like you see them tapping on the glass or honking the horn or rolling down the window and they're like hey 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 man you got that thing on there i'm like oh thanks sometimes i'll even jump out and pull it off and like stick it right to the side of the truck <laughs> and they're like oh okay you got me good but it's uh you know it's fun it's a good it's a good little advertisement for my business <laughs> Garden Fork Radio is produced by Garden Fork Media LLC in Brooklyn, New York. Executive producer, Jimmy Goots. If you'd like to learn more about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes, you can visit hollowbooks.com. The music for our show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Music